Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some Pittsburgh Steelers tape breakdown and analysis. We'll talk about something positive today, despite the loss and the ugliness of the season overall. Obviously, been a lot of negative, you know, commentary and analysis on my recent videos. So, how about something positive to begin to bring in the new year here in a couple of days? Isaiah Loudamilk, he was a guy that I was really surprised to a see the Steelers trade for to get, and then certainly take in the fifth round, which is where they traded up to get him. I viewed him as a maybe priority free agent, undrafted kind of guy who fit the Steelers scheme, but I didn't think the talent was great enough for him to to warrant a draft pick. And I got to say, I think I was wrong about that. And, and certainly his play this year, um, A, he's had to play more snaps than the Steelers and probably Latimer himself thought, um, but B, his play you know, on tape has actually been more impressive than I thought it would be. And so I thought against the Chiefs, although the run defense overall was not great, it wasn't as bad as it had been, but certainly could have been better. I thought Loudermilk was probably the best run defender in that game and maybe one of the best players overall in defense in this game for the Steelers, uh, talking Pittsburgh Steelers wise. So some clips today to show Loudermilk's, I think, maturation and improvement and really just stout play against the run. Loudermook making his first start of the season on Sunday to replace Chris Wormley and first start, first snap, and first tackle of the game. And you'll see him lined up here over right guard. And you see the stack, the shed, and the tackle on running back Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. And as a run defender, you want to create space between you and the blocker. You want separation. You want a gap there. As a pass rusher, you want to close up that space and be close to the guy so you can quickly shed. But here you want to create that space. And you see Loudermilk do that here, working on the right guard with his length, with his size overall, vision on the football, and then shed the block, fill your gap, and make the tackle. And I even like the finish here, and I pointed out in the video yesterday that some of the Overall pursuit and effort tackling and game tackling was not where I thought it needed to be for where this defense is at. But watch Lottie Milk here kind of on the ground run his feet and drive his feet through and obviously getting healthier from Schobert and Watt. But um, I just like the finish here. So he's holding his gap. He's playing technically sound. He's getting off the block. He's making the tackle. And I like the energy too. First play of the game. So this was not the blowout situation, you know, like it was at the end. But uh, we need some energy. Pittsburgh needs some energy right now to kind of get going and feel good about where they're at. And so I just kind of breath of a fresh air there to, to see a guy that played technically sound and, and, and have some energy there after making a good play. In today's day and age, when you have really elite talent like Cam Hayward and when available Stefan to it, you get a lot of one gap and guys are going to shoot their gaps and penetrate. You don't get quite as much of the old school two gapping, hold the point of attack and literally occupy two gaps. But you see that on this play here from Loudon Milk occupying the A and the B gap on this snap. So I'll run this thing through. And again, just technically sound, good pad level, good length, vision on the football, shedding and making the tackle. And just watch him here first, you know, be able to control the block here against 65. Whenever we kind of go through this clip, just watch the right outside hand at 65. He cannot get that hand secure in the Latimoke's chest. Latimoke is in control of this block the whole way through. And so he's going to first control that A gap right here. And you see the running back, he realizes the A gap is not available. So he's going to try to bounce this one to the outside here into the B gap. And as soon as he does that, Loudermilk flows with them and then be able to kind of get his head across the block here into the B gap, take that away as well and make the tackle on the play. So that is just like textbook definition of old school two gapping here, control the block, control the initial A gap, fall back into the B gap here when the back makes his cut and make the tackle. And so that is just like Aaron Smith, Brett Kiesel, 04, doing your job there. And it's not even like the linebackers had to clean up Loudermilk himself clean it up here on the play. So just watch from the aerial view and just watch that right hand, that that right guard there, um, never able to secure that block at all. And so Loudermilk there showing some pop off the line, playing with heavy hands, getting his arms extended, and then making the tackle there on the running back. So a really good play overall here for Isaiah Loudermilk. I'm not sure the down and distance of this one. I think it might have been second and two. So I think it might have been a first down on this play. I believe it was. But uh, putting that aside, just the overall technique of this play here for Loudermilk here, I thought was... Really kind of a veteran-type play for a rookie. Another example of Loudermilk stacking and shedding, working on the rookie, Creed Humphrey, who I'm sure most of us, myself included, was a Pittsburgh Steeler right now, and just getting off the block here, shedding Humphrey, and then making a really strong solo tackle in the open field on the running back, and that is Edwards Hilaire. And so just more of the same, controlling the point of attack, stacking, shedding, and then finishing the play with a good solo tackle here on 
their running back. Wish he would have gotten more help. Wish guys would have kind of rallied, not st- stood around and watched Lattimore make the tackle, but that is neither here nor there and certainly not uh, in Lattimore's control. But Lattimore here, um, again, controlling that block overall. Lon Humphrey shedding the block and making the tackle. Thought this example was kind of interesting, trying to maybe take a guess at the process and what was going through Lattimore's uh, mind on this play. This is going to be a gap scheme run to the right here with 65 the backside guard pulling and the tight end coming around as well. And so this plays run away from Loudermoke, but I think he kind of felt when he saw that guard pull away, got the back block by the center here, he knew where this run was going to go. And so it kind of gets muddied up. And I don't know a hundred percent if Loudermoke even really saw where the runner was at with all the mess in front of him, but I think he kind of felt it because um, of the pull and he kind of knew where the play was going. And so he comes off the block here at the end, a little bit downfield and makes the tackle. So it's a good run for KC overall, but I just, it, it kind of felt like he knew where that play was going not maybe because he had perfect vision on the football, but because of the, the, the pull there and the back block and with the way the, the blocking scheme was operating on this play. Although I will say, and I'll run it through, and this is a guy that's like legitimately 6'7", and usually that height is a little maybe too tall for some of these guys in terms of the leverage battle, but I think the advantage it gives you um, is that you're kind of seeing over everybody. And so you see a lot of them here working on Humphrey, who's smaller guy, I forget how tall he is, 6'3", 6'4", and maybe that kind of also helps give him vision on where that ball is going because he can literally start seeing over some of these guys where a guy who's a bit smaller, even 6'4", six, 6'5", six, might be eye level and and kind of lose the action there with all the bodies in front of him. So, you know, I think 6'7 is on the certainly taller end of things and it has its own disadvantages and problems. But I think on this play, you can kind of see Lottimo peering over and kind of maybe see where that back is going, which gave him the vision to find him when the back went through the hole. Last example, good effort play, good open field tackle. It's 30 to 3 here late in the third quarter. So this game's already over essentially at this point. But Lattimoke saving a big run on this one. If he does not make this tackle here, this is going to be a first down run, 10 plus yard run, one on one kind of run there with the safety and make up its Patrick. So here's Lattimoke here as the left defensive tackle here, the three tech on this play, blow down the line, find the running back, and then make a, just a, a great diving tackle on Gore in you know in the gap there before he's able to get into that second and third level. Because if Lattimoke does not make this tackle, there's no linebacker on this play. It's just Minka and a lot of open grass. And, and Minka's done a great job making tackles this year. But uh, it's nice that he did not have to make a tackle on this play. And so Lattimoke there flowing down the line. The question with him is, can he be a good athlete? Can he flow against some of these more perimeter zone type of runs? And so on this play... Um, it's just good effort. It's good vision getting off the block there and then finishing the play. Such an issue for this team as you're finishing the actual play. And so overall, you know, I still wonder with Latimer, my main concern with him was where is that ceiling at? Can he be a, a starter and every down guy, a sub package guy? Is the pass rush juice enough? And I still have my reservations about that. But um, if he can become just a solid rotational backup, a three, four base guy, you can play really steady run defense and boy, is this team needs some steady run defense right now, then I think you're going to get your money's worth out of a fifth-round pick there. So overall, I've been really happy with Lattimoke's development this year. It's certainly been accelerated by the increased playtime with all the injuries up front to, to Stefan Tua, to uh, to an extent Tyson Alualu, and then Chris Wormley not playing in this game, and guys like Carlos Davis and Bugs being down this year. Just the general uh, depth being tested up front. So kudos to Lattimoke. I think, again, the upside there, the ceiling, I, I don't know quite where that's at. Uh, I'm worried he's a bit of a maxed out player, but um, he, he's done well. And I've been really impressed with that run defense. And in a year where this has been a historically bad run defense and a lot of guys have struggled, Latimoak is one guy who I think overall has impressed. And there was something there with him and he should be a guy that uh, I think can become a really good backup and rotational piece in the future. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Appreciate you guys watching. Please like and subscribe. You guys have not done so already, and we'll talk to you soon.